To position the abductor spars for an IM nailing in the supine position with skeletal traction for an operative left leg procedure, begin by loosening the knob below the A rosette and set the A joint to the X position, then relock the A rosette handle. Next, loosen the knob below the B rosette and set the B joint to position 4, then relock the B rosette handle. Adjust the patient's left leg abductor spar using the control handle shown here. Adjust the patient's right leg abductor extended straight out. Refer to the illustrations on page 16 of the OT table setup guide, or position spars as clinically required. Reverse these settings for an operative right leg procedure. The tabletop can slide in a transverse fashion from left to right to accommodate patient transfer onto and off of the table, to expose the surgical site, or to expose the anatomy for C-arm imaging purposes. The tabletop must be leveled before manual unlatch buttons are available for use. First, ensure the head section is level and manually adjust as needed. Next, press the level tilt button on the hand control to ensure that the tabletop is level. The preferred method to translate the tabletop is through the illuminated buttons on the side of the tabletop. Press and hold the manual green unlatch button located on either side of the tabletop, and then physically push the tabletop laterally left or right until it locks in position. Alternatively, the tabletop can be translated by unlatching the lateral slide through the buttons on the primary hand control. Press and hold the green unlatch button on the hand control and then physically push the tabletop laterally left or right until it locks in position. The table is now ready for patient transfer. Execute patient transfer using facility protocols for safe patient handling and ensure even patient weight distribution. Once the patient is positioned safely on the tabletop surface, adjust the tabletop by repeating the instructions to obtain the desired lateral tabletop position. The centered position is typical for anterior hip cases, whereas left justified or right justified positions are typical for an operative left or right leg fracture or trauma procedure, such as hip pinnings or IM nailings. Refer to pages 8 to 21 of the OT table setup guide to verify the appropriate tabletop slide position shown in the illustrations. There are two different perineal post sizes that can be chosen for orthopedic applications. The tall post is typically used for adults. The short post is typically used for smaller adults, teenagers, and children. Choose the perineal post that meets the clinical needs of the patient and desired positioning. There are two positions in the sacral rest to facilitate positioning requirements for a range of patients and to improve imaging area with unobstructed views. Most patients require the post inserted in the distal position. Taller patients typically require the post inserted in the caudal position. Place desired perineal post and pad into the appropriate hole on the sacral rest. Ensure the post is fully seated into the sacral rest's hole. Failure to ensure correct placement could result in patient injury during active traction. Finally, shift the patient snug against the perineal post. Ensure there is no space between the patient's perineum and the perineal post. The OT1000 series table is equipped with both an anesthesia arm board to help position the arm on the non-operative side of the body and a multi-position arm board to help position the arm on the operative side of the body to ensure patient arms are properly positioned during the procedure. Before attaching an anesthesia arm board, first apply a socket clamp to the side rail on the non-operative side of the table. Next, apply the standard anesthesia arm board to the side rail of the table on the non-operative side. Adjust as needed to accommodate proper arm position. Apply the safety strap to secure the arm. Next, mount the multi-position arm board into the socket clamp, adjust the height and position of the arm board above the patient's torso, and tighten the socket clamp to secure. Place the patient's operative side arm into the multi-position arm board and apply the safety strap to secure the arm. Ensuring proper patient foot placement in the traction boot will secure the patient's foot when traction is needed. Complete the following steps to ensure proper alignment in the boot. 
First, loosen the middle strap of the traction boot by releasing the strap ratchet found on the back of the boot. Release tension by lowering ratchet assembly to the bottom of the boot. Loosen strap by pulling outward. If the buckles on the bootstraps are not released, open the three buckles by squeezing tabs and lace straps over exterior of the boot. Before placing the patient's foot in the traction boot, it must be first placed in a Steris Traction Boot disposable pad or prepped using local OR materials such as gauze wrap and coban. If using the Steris disposable pad, instructions for placement are located on the disposable pad itself. Once the foot is prepped with padding, ensure that the floating Achilles tendon pad is positioned appropriately as shown here and is not stuffed down into the heel area. Place the patient's foot into the boot so that the heel rests against the bottom foot plate and the foam padding shown here is as close to the patient's calf as possible. Ensure the Achilles pad is positioned against the Achilles tendon. Next, buckle middle strap and ensure the strap is directly over top of the ankle. On the underside of the boot, tighten the middle strap using the strap ratchet assembly until the ankle is secure. Finally, Buckle the toe and calf straps and tighten straps securely. Ensure all buckles are centered. Failure to follow these steps could lead to the patient's foot slipping out of the traction boot. Repeat these steps with the other patient foot as clinically necessary. Some orthopedic procedures may only require one patient foot and leg in traction. A universal leg holder will be used for the other leg in these unilateral situations. Most unilateral orthopedic cases will employ the use of a universal leg holder to position the non-operative leg during the surgery. A socket clamp for the side rail or a spar clamp can be used for accurate positioning. Place the socket clamp on the tabletop side rail of the table on the non-operative side. Alternatively, place the spar clamp on the short section of the spar on the non-operative side and tighten down the handle to secure. Place the socket post in the socket clamp or the spar clamp and tighten down the respective handle to secure. Use the adjustable joints of the articulating universal leg holder to position the device appropriately for the patient's non-operative leg. Ensure all connections are secured before placing the patient leg in the holder. Unlock the two knobs under the left and right side of the patient transfer board's prongs, found right above the abductor spar rosettes as shown here. Remove the patient transfer board and return to storage. Pulling skeletal traction will require lowering the spar. Ensure the gross traction unit is unlocked on the operative leg, then using the control handle at the end of the spar, pull the trigger with fingers to unlock vertical movement capability. Adjust height downward as needed to achieve a proper bend at the knee to allow exposure to pull skeletal traction. On the non-operative abductor spar, reset the L-shaped bracket in the spar clamp to a 90-degree horizontal position so that the L-shape is pointing toward the operative leg. Loosen the knob below the gross traction slide and pivot the traction assembly 90 degrees and into alignment with the patient and the operative leg. Remove the traction boot if present. Insert the skeletal traction bow or the traction bow block to prepare to pull skeletal traction. Follow instructions for use for attachment of the K-wire employed. Adjust gross traction slide as necessary for K-wire placement and pulling traction. When setup is complete, the Steris OT table should look like this for the intended procedure. Refer to the OT table setup guide, pages 8 through 21, for written instructions on setting up the table for this orthopedic case.